organizational design, in my, from my take, is the idea that there, there, there's a way to do things that are purposely driven uh, in order to create the kind of organizational culture that does all the right, does all the things that you want organizations to do well. Um, and it becomes self, and through the process of its growing or maturation, becomes aware enough as a, an organization, you know, made up of individuals and, and teams of individuals. Um, but they become self, the organization itself becomes aware enough to recognize when it's heading in directions that are obstacles to growth or obstacles to innovation or obstacles to uh, changing with the times um, and is proactive about them rather than becoming reactive about them. Um, now, I've been in a lot of, every organization has its set of dysfunctions and a lot of them seem to center around uh, miscommunication. And I think that, that in, I don't think that anybody goes out of their way to do, to be mean or to, to cut th people off or cut people out. I mean, sometimes that happens, but I think more often than not, I think there's a culture that pervades an organization, whether it's a, a, a small company, whether, you know, that's, you know, struggling with the amount of growth and the amount of work that's co coming in. Whether it's a big company that's dealing with the fact that there are silos, uh, whether it's a government where you have so many different agencies and just there's just so much complexity that it's really hard to make sense of how to get how to connect similar work along different areas, um, and it could be a trans organization as well. And I, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that when organizations begin, you know. Think about your your small businesses, your entrepreneurs, and all of a sudden they go from one person to two people. And you don't have the time to plan out how to do things well. I mean, most people haven't taken that time. Um, they make a lot of decisions that then become codified. They weren't meant to be lasting decisions that drive the organization. They were meant to get us from point A to point B. Uh, but they become the default decisions. And that those become the foundations for big silo walls. Um, and, and, and it becomes difficult, I think, from a person from my perspective to come in as a change agent and start, you know, where you have a lot of people who are keeping their fingers in the dike to keep the leaks from happening. I'm trying to break the dam <laughs> um, and let all the water pull together and then figure out where it goes from there. Uh, and, and that's a very different perspective, and it's very dangerous, I think. Well, it's perceived as very dangerous, I think, for people who have investment in the way things are. Um, not for, and I, and I would say it's not even for any sense of greed. Uh, it's really about the sense of this is what got me here. You know, this is, how I, this is how I know it works. It may not work well. There may be better ways of doing it, but this is how I know it actually works. Um. And being able to change people's perspective that, yes, but it can work, yes, and it can work better. You know, yes, and there is room for more. You know, yes, and there is room for change. It's a very difficult conversation to have. And it's one that I'm still learning to have. You know, I'm, not, I'm only starting to, I think, get a grasp of what it means to consult in that manner uh, as opposed to...